the compass, a simple device that works by a very simple mechanism. A magnetized needle aligns itself with the magnetic field of the Earth and points north from everywhere on the planet. The motion of this simple device is direct evidence against the notion of a flat Earth and positive evidence that the Earth is indeed a globe. Let's look at how a magnet would move if the Earth was flat. Now there's no flat Earth model that is agreed upon to tell us where the magnetic North Pole is precisely, and they don't believe in a South Pole. So given what we know about magnetism, let's look at a few scenarios with this unipole magnetic North. First, let's consider magnetic north on a flat earth being just around the surface of the earth. How would the compass needle act? Well, the compass needle would point toward magnetic north, and as long as the compass was level and at the same altitude, the needle would stay level, as we can see in my diagram and in this simulated magnetic north. What if magnetic north on a flat earth was high up, like at the level of the sun, the moon, or the dome? As always, the needle would point toward the source, and thus would point up when nearer to the physical North Pole. And as it was moved farther south, the needle would drop back toward level, but never going below level. Lastly, what if the magnetic North Pole were below the surface of a flat Earth? In that case, the opposite would happen. As the compass was taken farther north, it would point downward toward the magnetic pole, and as it was moved south, it would move back toward level, but never truly getting there. Now I assume that many of my viewers have worked with magnetic compasses in the past. Those of you who have can answer this question. Do any of these scenarios fit what a compass does in the real world? What about on a globe? Given the accepted understanding of the Earth and its magnetic pole, what would we expect to see from a compass? Well, given how the globe has two magnetic poles, the lines of the magnetic field go straight down at the North Pole and straight up at the South Pole, like this, forming this pattern. So the needle will point in line with the lines of magnetism, pointing up in the South and down in the North, like this. Now I'll put that question out there again. Which of these four scenarios reflects what happens in the real world? The globe one, of course. Don't believe me? Ask anyone who's taken a standard northern region compass below the equator. Yes, I said northern region compass. This is a zone one compass. It was made to be used in the upper northern hemisphere, like in the United States. Manufacturers make compasses for five zones across the globe, balancing the magnetic needle to compensate for the tilt it would have due to its latitude. You can't access new trade regions if your compass doesn't work below the equator. The free market understands that the world is a globe. Manufacturers have also developed this compass with a needle that is independent from the magnet, a global needle that doesn't tilt, it just points and thus can be used anywhere. They say necessity is the mother of invention and the world being a globe made this invention a necessity. Now, globe deniers may claim that I have not properly presented the flat Earth position on the magnetic North Pole. Well, given that globe deniers don't have a model of how it actually works, I can't be blamed for that. The claim I've made here has been tested billions of times. If globe deniers want to say this is wrong, then they need to come up with a model, make predictions with it, and then take it out into the real world and test it. Until then, So did you notice the change in this video from its earlier incarnation? Yeah, that error came about because I was looking for a way to simplify the concept and in my zeal for brevity, I stopped looking at the magnetic field and started focusing on the magnet itself. And in doing so, I eliminated half of the movement that occurs on a compass. Now, the end result is the same. Compasses have to be balanced to fit their location on the globe. I could have sat back, satisfied that the globe model fits reality while the non-existent flat model does not. But the path getting there is important. So I want to thank all my viewers that said, yo, you know, you may have left out something important. 
thank you for that. It's always appreciated. I don't claim to always be right, but I try not to be wrong for very long. Shouldn't we all? All right, people. Try to learn something new today about the world that you didn't know yesterday. If you can, help someone else do the same and enjoy yourself while you're doing it. Take care. Me!